Mr. Tetsiang, thank you very much for accepting this interview. Thank you very much for being here with us. We are very happy to have you for this interview on Humanity and AI on the occasion of the SNF Nostos Conference. Although the term AI is to some extent in everyone's lips, it seems that there are a lot of different perceptions of AI. You have underlined that when we talk about AI in science fiction, we are talking about something very different than what we mean when we say AI in the context of current technology. What are the main differences between sci-fi and real AI? In science fiction, uh, the term AI usually refers to something like a machine that thinks or a software program that actually thinks. It may not be exactly like a person, but it, uh, it thinks in the way that people think. But right now in you know, the contemporary tech world, when people talk about AI, they're talking about something very, very different. They're talking about a type of software basically a for, using a form of applied statistics. You know, when a company says, oh, we're using AI to um, recommend books that you might like, they're using applied statistics to come up with a good recommendation. And you know, when they say they're using AI to determine who gets a, a loan, they're using applied statistics to determine someone's credit worthiness. This usage of AI, it refers to a very powerful and useful form of software, but it is a long, long ways from a machine that thinks. But I think that a lot of times um, companies would like you to believe that they're getting somewhere close to a machine that thinks, but they are not. It is true that so many of our technologies are filtered through capitalism. It seems like Technology brings corporations to our lives and vice versa. Why should this concern us? I think that a lot of times when people talk about you know, the fear of AI or the fear of technology in general, those fears are better understood as fears of capitalism or fears of how corporations are going to use technology against people. When people worry about their jobs disappearing because they're replaced by AI. It's not really AI that's the problem. The problem is that companies would rather you know, uh, have software that they don't have to pay a salary to. Corporations are trying to reduce their costs and increase their profits. Um, and technology offers them a way to do that. I'd say it's not the technology itself that uh, is the problem. It's how corporations are using technology that's the problem. What are your main concerns when it comes to AI and ethics? Sometimes when people refer to AI ethics, they are talking about the question of, does an AI uh, deserve ethical consideration? Does it deserve any rights? Um, but I think you know, that is a question that will only really become relevant in the distant future when we have machines that actually think and feel. For the foreseeable future, AI ethics will refer to how companies and how governments are using AI technology against individual people. Are they using it in ways that uh, disproportionately affect certain populations? I think that there is a very strong temptation for co corporations and governments to say that, well, we're not discriminating against anyone. It's We're just doing what the math says. This is what the software tells us to do, and the software is just doing the math. I think that is usually just an excuse. Statistics can be used uh, in a lot of different ways. Statistics can be, can be misused in a lot of ways. So the fact that you're using statistics does not excuse you from responsibility. And so, so for now, you know, AI ethics means we need to demand that corporations and governments behave responsibly when they are using AI when they're using this form of applied statistics. And if society can do nothing to change corporations' goal, which is profit, what can society do? I don't know. That is a very tough question. I don't know if, if there's a way to make corporations 
value profit less. But I think, you know, maybe what we have to do is to maybe uh, strengthen the things that work against corporations like governments or unions, things that uh, organizations which uh, protect the rights of individuals and workers. If we strengthen unions and strengthen governments, uh, government regulation of corporations, that will have you know, some balancing effect against corporations. They can try and seek out profits, and hopefully these other organizations will be better equipped to, uh, to stop them. Should we go on with a universal basic income? A universal basic income would be an excellent a uh, way to counter the effects of jobs lost to automation. That is something that a government uh, has to do. A government is the only one who can uh, tax corporations and use the money gained through taxing corporations to provide universal basic income. If we can get everyone used to the idea of a universal basic income, to think of that as uh, a normal thing instead of a really outlandish idea, then you know, people will support uh, the government instituting such a policy. Universal basic, basic income would be an essential part of counterbalancing the harmful effects of uh, automation. Talking about AI and ethics, let me reverse the discussion a little bit and move on humanity ethics towards AI. So I would like to ask you, what are super intelligent technologies right now? Subjects or objects? We don't have any super intelligent technologies right now. Um, the software we have now is definitely an object. It is not a subject. We don't have any software that is uh, remotely like a person uh, that deserves the consideration that people deserve. The software we have right now are, are purely objects, they are, they are tools. In theory, it is possible for us to build machines or build software that would deserve moral consideration you know, and thus you know, be a, a subject, but that is a long ways off. It's not clear when we might ever have that. And if humanity finally reaches a point where AI products would be subject, do you think that humanity would intend to give robots rights and legal protection? Uh, I'm skeptical that people would uh, want to give robots legal protection. It's not impossible, but I think that it would require a major shift in um, people's attitudes. Because you know, right now we see that it's hard to get people to agree on giving other human beings rights. A lot of people say, oh, those people, they don't come from our country, so they don't have any rights. And those are people. You know, it's also very hard for people to uh, agree to give animals rights. Historically, we have, I think, moved in the, in the direction of sort of expanding the circle of rights. There are a lot of people who argue that, yes, everyone, every human deserves rights no matter what country they come from. We're making progress on that. And now there are people who argue for animal rights. And so eventually, maybe, you know, there could be people arguing that machines or our conscious software would deserve rights and legal protection. But uh, that is a long ways off. Right now, we should worry about, you know, can we give all human beings rights? And then can we give animals rights, some, some protections? Those are the, the barriers that we'll have to overcome first. Thank you very much, Mr. Chiang, for this interview. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me.